Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. We get closer and closer to 8 o'clock. But before we get there, of course, you've been seeing the art on set all morning. And you know we've been doing it since the beginning of May, where we've uh, had artists work on display for the entire week. And we've been changing that artist. And this morning, we have a brand new artist to present to you. Uh, well, at least on set, bringing his work, Mr. Gishan Narayan. Good morning, Gishan. Good morning, of course. How are you? Great. Wonderful to be here. Let me firstly say thank you for sharing your work with us and for bringing it to the set. Yes. Um, I know that you would have been here on the show previously. I think it might have been even before my time with Lisa Wickham. Yes. And you, were, you started a painting on set live. Yes. And apparently it turned into one of the ones that we have here yeah, this morning on display. Right. That's right. That's right. Which it says this, is this, this, what's the name of this one? It's that's um, the... Through many in search of through one. Through many in search of one, yes. All right. So, well, before, let me, let me, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Let me get back into, into how you got into this yes. art thing to begin with. I know you've been doing it since you're a child, but what inspires you to, to, be, to want to be an artist? It's a developing passion, I would start with. And then there is this love for expressing nature. How God designed certain things and try to express it there, and also human experiences, learning and understanding that, and also learning and understanding myself and expressing it in art as well. Mm. So it's like almost like therapy for you. Ah, that's it, exactly therapy. I mean, you find that sense of peace when you're painting. Yeah, it, it's therapeutic. It helps um, clear certain boundaries that you may have in life and makes you push past it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, so you, you, you paint? Yes. You do stuff with acrylics and oil paint? Not oil as yet, because okay. the, the space that I work in is a bit too small, and that might be... You Messy. Know, yeah. <laughs> so, so I stick with the acrylics, I do some watercolors, and then there's the pastels and chalk and, chalk stuff, and like stuff, that. charcoal that I nice. work with. And then you also do some wire bending, from what I understand. Yeah, so um, that's something that I recently got into. Mm -hmm. um, it started while I was at UE, pursuing my degree. and. Uh, I found it very um, easy to work with. I thought it would have been challenging, yeah. but there are so many uh, variations that you could work with. And also I incorporated with some of my paintings and different mediums mm -hmm. just to you know, push forward a, a message that I, that yeah. I want to. I want to backtrack a bit. You mentioned that you would have started doing that at UE. And I, I'm curious as to how the university level of art education mm -hmm. would have adjusted your perspective on art and, and how you approach your work. So before, um, before I turned anywhere, I thought, well, I make it, I could draw, I could paint, I'm an artist. Yeah. But then when I got into that setting, you learn so much more in terms of the different um, styles and the history of art. Mm -hmm. And also an artist coming from the Caribbean, especially from Trinidad and Tobago, how we could market ourselves mm. and push our art out there yeah. globally. What defines our art or makes our art so different from anywhere else in the world? You just look at the fabric of the country or the makeup of our country. We have so many diverse races, mm -hmm. so many experiences to talk about. And how does it mix? How come all these people, different people living in this small space, come together and create such a diverse culture? Yeah. Yeah, so and that on its own helps um, put ourselves in this niche within the world to, um, I mean, you could see the influence. In really, everything. In everything, right. yeah, in everything. Now, it's interesting you mentioned that coming together and that mixing of, of you know, people, of races, of cultures, because one of your pieces was on display at Meals Fleur for the past week. Yes. Uh, when it came to the, uh, the expo that was showcasing uh, traditional Indian work and Indian heritage work. Um, Firstly, tell me the inspiration for that piece. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to show a little clip of it now. Uh, but tell me the inspiration for that piece, and then how you felt to have it on display at Meal Fleur. Oh, that, that in, on its own was amazing. I mean, just to have your work out there and uh, having that small part of you, your whole process and persons coming and looking at it and seeing how it's put together and can relate to it as well, that was, that was uh, excellently interesting. The inspiration, at first I wanted to do uh, a piece uh, to commemorate my dad mm -hmm. and because that's where I get the rank from. Right. <laughs> and then I decided instead of going that way, let me just incorporate his ancestry and his past. And I included the endangered labor ship, uh, something that I find is somewhat overlooked 
with you know the whole carnival history or carnival history as well mm -hmm. and their input into um, our whole economy our society our culture and that's why that's why I named it they worked for our present right all right, and that one is made of, of, of what um, materials? I understand it's on a glass case, so we can bring it and start coming and taking our responsibility for a glass case, big man. But what is the, it, what, what's the medium you use for that one? All right, so I started off with some, uh, I started off with a base of charcoal. However, there's an interesting part of it where I just uh, burnt paper to make some ashes and created my own paint. So I use that as a base. And it sort of was a reflection to the past and, and also. The and the yes. Nice. Well played. Mm -hmm. Well played. I like that. All right. You also used uh, different aspects of our cultural history as well. Yes. Because the same one that we were just talking about that you started on set here at the Now Morning Show, through many in search of one, uh, it to me it looked like Jab Malassis and Blue Devils yeah. and, and that sort of imagery. Yeah. Um, but explain to me your, your thinking behind it and what, what you were trying to get out of it. Uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting take and it lays into the work itself. Uh, however, I also incorporated some pillars and I like to use pillars as uh, structures of um, organizations, not organizations only, but sense of uh, power and mm. how it relates to government structures basically, right? right? And then it relates to like certain icons in it any pillars sort of relates to how things were and what we incorporated into our own structure, government structure as well, and how we fit into that, trying to find that sense of identities, trying to find that sense of power and how it works. Sean, be honest with me now. Is that the politically correct way of saying that we're trying to bond down the system? <laughs> because you're seeing it, the power and the pillars and all uh, that thing, and I see in real fire in that picture. Ah, uh, well, that's something that comes from within. So, how do we relate <laughs> it? That, that's a very, I like that. And art, I like your take art on it. That is all about perspective, right? Yes, that's right. That's <laughs> well, right. Well, let me say thank you so much for, for joining us on set and for sharing your work with us for the entire week. I really, yes. really appreciate it. I mean, there's this one in, in, the, in the middle here that we've been <laughs> seeing on set all morning with the, the gentleman climbing, the young boys climbing yes. the tree. And it reminds me of when I was young and I would go uh, outside in the yard and I would climb my plum tree just to get a better vantage point, yeah. just for comfort sometimes. Yes. You know what I mean? And it, it gives a lot of that. Is it, is it uh, meant to be a pui tree? Or any, represents it, any it tree? Meant, it represents any tree, but most importantly, it represents that inner child in us where we're trying to better ourselves, try to reach at the top and be that one, that one specific version of ourselves where we can look back and say, all right, well, I made it. And I excel to the, and best, I excel of to the best of my ability. Thank you so much, Gishan, for, for joining us on set and for yes. sharing your work again. Thanks and we'll definitely here. be celebrating it all week long. I appreciate that. Thanks for having my work here. And also, thanks for yeah, man, having to talk with me. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage each and every one of you to go out there and just like Gishan, make a difference today now. Because together we aspire, and if together we perspire, then together we most definitely can achieve. On behalf of Kimberly D'Souza and the entire team here at TTT, I'm Rockers wishing you a fantastic day. Remember to walk with your umbrellas and be safe. We have Roxanne Suraj at the top of the hour. Enjoy the rest of your day. Love in the house.